In order for the game to be successful and to live for a really, really long time and to make people to return over and over again, it actually needs to be addictive. Yes, this world has quite a bad meaning in today's society, but for games, it can be quite an amazing thing. Unless we're talking about free-to-play mobile games, those things absolutely suck. And in modern times, very few things can be as addictive as factory building games. Those games took the world by the storm and these are the games that not a lot of gamers actually play, but has probably the highest retention rate of any game genre because most people who start playing these games perfectly understand that this is the game that they will be stuck in the game that they will not be able to abandon for a really long time because it will take quite a lot of time to fully understand and fully complete the game and because of this is actually quite popular games like satisfactory dyson sphere program those games are have incredibly dedicated fan bases that play for really really long time and attract more and more players but no game has done more for this genre than this one small game game that was launched in early access in 2016 and game that does not really have a real 3d graphics that still managed to shake entire genre and has the most steady amount of player bases of any games period and is of course none other than factorio and today i want to talk about why people can't seem to stop playing this game and why this game is still 11 kicking almost decades since its original release so let's talk about the favorite addictive substance of factory building gamers cracktorio i mean game factorio and the first contributing factor of why people cannot stop playing this game is its simplicity and yet wait before i hear anything i already hear the collective rising of eyebrows of every single factorio player i know that i don't mean that game is simple i mean the simplicity of the game is one of most inviting factor of the game and what do i mean by simplicity the game has very defined and very understandable goal and the main gameplay mechanic and yeah it has a few scenarios but in a main mode which is a free play your main goal is to build Build a rocket ship and get the hell out of the planet. That's very simple to understand. You, everything that you do goes toward that goal. Even though most likely while you're playing this game, you'll completely forget that this is a goal. You still have that goal in mind. And this is the main top goal of the game, which is very simple to understand. And the secondary goal of the game is to mine resources in order to build this rocket ship and to protect yourself from the local wildlife. Pretty simple to understand. That premise is understandable for basically anyone and everyone. And this simplicity of a main gameplay is its main allure. This is why people are actually jumping into the game and starting to play it. And the simplicity extends in the beginning of the game because the first things that you will do is rather simple. You can chop down the trees, you can mine a coal, you can mine some metals, mine a stone and build your first automated factories. Well, it's not that really factories, it's just a thing that mines a coal and gets it to this iron smelter which smells iron sheets, but it's still very simple to understand. And almost anyone can do it. But where game will stop you and slap you from down under is when you actually start playing this game a bit further like around after one hour and it is the game's depth yes even though main allure is actually simple to understand but the depth is where actual game lies the details and complexity of the game is simply staggering and more you'll do simply more things arise keeping you glued and coming back for more and more because you don't really know what comes next and you really want to know this and you start mining your basic resources and start building your base items but more and more things arise more types of energy more types of transportation more types of resources more combinations and this thing just keeps it going more and more and more and more and it seems like there is no end the tech tree is incredibly deep and it's not just in factory details it's just overall details of the game you see in this game you're actually constantly attacked by alien wildlife i mean the local wildlife but even after you play for hundreds of hours but you might not really understand why they are doing this and there is actually a reason for that because while you're doing this all these automations and factories you're actually polluting environment around you and the local wildlife do not like it and they attack you just like a body would attack a disease and you are a disease in this case and more factories you will build more pollution you will create and more bigger and angrier box will become and also world will become much more bleaker and much more dead as you progress to the game and the small details are sprinkled everywhere and it's incredibly fun things to notice but this depth and coming back for more and more and more and more is not just to discover more things it's also goes to one of the 
biggest reason of this game's addiction. It's optimization madness. My god, because this game has so many elements, because the factories and buildings have so many different elements, even the smallest changes that you will make down the production line will affect everything that you do in the game. And you will want to make the small changes to increase your production, to make it faster, to make it more efficient, because you need to make so many different things at the end of the game that you will want as high efficiency as humanly possible. And this optimization madness is not just a one-time thing, it is endless, because there is no way that you can optimize everything perfectly, not even at 100th try, because everyone plays differently, everyone does things differently, and everything is different in every single playthrough. And this optimization madness is just keeps coming back over and over and over again. And this vicious cycle is why this game is actually called Cractorial. I mean, people are calling this Cractorial, not actual game is called that. This optimization just keeps on going endlessly. And yeah, this is actually where the fun lies. And I know that I sound and look like a crackhead while I'm saying this, but man, this is incredibly fun to do so. I mean, not sound like crackhead. I mean, actually doing the optimization in the game. But even if you'll spend hundreds of hours into the game, even if you'll launch hundreds of ships, even if you'll finish the game so many times that you cannot even count, which most likely you will not because you'll spend so much time optimization, you will still not even scratch the surface because there is one button in the game after clicking of which you will get into a rabbit hole which there is no way out of and it is mods my god any game becomes big and very diverse with mods but this this is on completely another level adding different resources adding different recipes optimizations the different type of blueprints there's so many different things that you can add through mods it's simply insane even the entire space age dlc which will be coming really soon which is not out at the moment of the recording of the video is actually based on the mod that is still available for everyone for free. Yes, ability to get to the other planets is also possible through mods. But it's not an existence of the mods that is the biggest part of the game. It is its accessibility. You don't need to go somewhere else to access mods. The mods are directly available in game. I mean, browsing of mods. You all need to do is just click mod menu button and that's it. You have an access to every mod available in the game and you can just select it and install it. That's all. How big is it? Why the hell does not every single game has it? And it will save so much time and make so many games basically immortal just like Factorio is. Overall, these are just a few reasons why this game is actually completely immortal and will not die anytime soon. Tens of thousands of people have been playing this game daily for years now. Now, and there is a no sign that it will go down anytime soon. Game seems absolutely mortal and feels like one as well because people simply cannot stop playing it. And yeah, I think they should not because this game is absolutely amazing and a feat of game development and game creation, period. And this video is sponsored by this channel's brand new sponsor, Instant Gaming. If you want to get best games for the cheapest prices, no matter it's on a PC, PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo consoles, and you don't want to wait for any sales, Instant Gaming is the way to go. And I also part with this again for epic giveaway of any game of your choice in the description down below so click the link in the description to take part in there and also every purchase that you make on instant gaming through my link will help the channel as well so click the link in the description to get the best games for the best prices now back to the video and of course if you like factory building games you most like the love satisfactory as well which i have the review of full 1.0 release right here and i also have similar video like this one about dyson sphere program which is my second favorite or maybe one of my favorite factory building game and you can watch the video about that right here as well and don't forget to right here as well and i'm gonna see you in the next one take care